Welcome, everybody. We are Facebook Live. We are doing a new Hilco Home show where we are going to be talking with real people and real deals, real situations in real estate. And we want to give uh, you the opportunity and the chance to go ahead and send your questions, your comments to the people we're talking to today. We have four awesome individuals talking about their different scenarios where myself and the Hilco Homes team will be giving some great insights, perspectives, and hopefully valuable information to people uh, today with their different situations. So, and by the way, we need your involvement. So we're gonna start with Mr. Casey Klaus. Can you do a quick intro to yourself? Hey, uh, I'm Casey Klaus. Um, I work for a uh, company uh, in this city that helps people uh, buy rentals and teaches them. I'm a realtor that can help uh, a lot of these investors be able to buy these uh, rentals and that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> so you're basically a totally awesome badass guy. I try to be, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. the awesome thing about you, Casey, is that uh, like you were mentioning, you help people as a real estate agent find mm -hmm. investment quality properties so that they can acquire for their own portfolio and in essence create their own financial freedom. Right. And at the same time, you know, I'm trying to be able to find some rental properties for myself. I, I'm here because I wanted to be able to network with a lot of different wholesalers uh, and, and build relationships. That's totally. What the whole real estate investing is all about. Well, we have a, a bunch of <coughs> totally awesome people in the room here today too, so we, we can make sure to uh, build those relationships. So we want to start out by helping you. Okay. So uh, obviously you're already integrated into the real estate uh, realm. You're right. a real estate agent. Uh, right. I hear that you have uh, quite a few letters behind your name there as well. <laughs> Just a few. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you're, you're proficient in that realm. You've been interested in real estate investing for uh, a number of years. Mm -hmm. You've seen a lot of number of different investment deals, so you know what the numbers look like. Sure. Uh, what are you trying to accomplish for yourself? But also, you know, obviously we're a wholesaling company. What is it on the wholesaling realm? that you're looking to do? Well, specifically what I'm doing is is finding uh, other wholesalers that can bring me the deals for all of my investors is pretty much what I'm doing. And if I can get enough of those deals lined up, that means that I can invest in my own deals. So I wanted to be on the forefront ah. to be able to see all the really good deals that come in for our members and to, you know, they're happy, the wholesaler's happy, the seller's happy, and I'm very happy. And if I get enough of those in a month, then I can go ahead and put a down payment on a rental property myself because that's the end goal. So your clients must really love you. They do. You're like finding all these deals for them. That's so right. when they're getting this financial freedom and they're over here taking these cruises, they need to make sure to be booking a ticket for you as well. I, I would like to. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. we said it here. Come on. You yeah. got to make sure yeah. to be doing that. Okay, so uh, why don't we start uh, with this approach? It sounds like the main goal here is to find a build a network of wholesalers. Sure, sure. Which by the way, anyone that wants to be a wholesaler themselves, we close most of our deals um, with other wholesalers, which is pretty awesome. Hey, Kirk, can we do a, just a quick pan of everybody here in the room? So we have, mm -hmm. a, we have an audience here, everybody uh, that's helping us and participating with us. They're gonna be jumping in doing questions as well. We wanna make sure to get your questions too if you're out there watching. Good morning, Joseph. Appreciate you being out there. Kimberly, thank you for participating as well. Um, but you want to build a network of wholesalers so yes. that you those wholesalers are consistently sending you um, some deals, right? Right. Pretty much uh, the market is the seller's market today. All the prices are going up. The taxes are going up, which means and that we're in San Antonio. Texas. Yeah, we're in San Antonio. So the cash flows are getting a little bit lower and lower, and the investors are becoming pretty hungry. So... You know, you have to find an alternate route, and the alternate route is to be able to get more wholesalers, more wholesale deals that are at a deep discount for these investors so they can, you know, meet their uh, cash flow requirements. So what have you currently done to get on wholesaler or to connect with other wholesalers? Uh, obviously, I've been working with you and your team uh, very closely. That's all you need to do. Yeah, You're that, done. I mean, pretty much It's that. over. Yeah, pretty much that. I get phone calls, you know, from your team and, and emails. Also been working with a few other private uh, wholesalers uh, and going to networking events and meeting these individual wholesalers so that they can, you know, trust and, and build a rapport and, uh, you know, they send me the deals and then I, if I can get them sold, then they love me and they keep sending me more deals, which is awesome. Okay. So you've <coughs> built a, a handful of, of wholesalers that are calling you, sending you deals. That's what I'm trying okay, to do. Okay. So yep. now I want to elicit some help from the Hilco team. We'll start with you, Aaron our uh, in-house in celebrity here. 
Um, how would you recommend for Casey to build his network of wholesalers? And make sure you're talking to the mic, okay? Basically, what you're already doing, Casey. Um, come on, come <laughs> We're already on. working with him. I mean, you're already a badass. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just keep coming to these events. I mean, mm -hmm. like Jason, you know, he's a local wholesaler. And I know he always has deals. Um, and what you were doing at the at the Propelio thing, which was, guys, it was a good event as well, mm -hmm. networking and, and getting to know some other wholesalers. Sure. Um, I would be doing the same thing if I was trying to find some buyers. Right, right. So, you're, I mean, you're basically already doing it. The fact that you come here says a lot, to be honest, um, that you really are hungry to start. Well, I think the, the value event. that I bring is, you know, if you're, if you're a wholesaler, you're trying to build up your buyers list, you're, you're meeting that one person and you're like, okay, this one guy could be on my list. Well, the value that I bring is I've got hundreds of buyers that would be able to buy those uh, those wholesale deals for right. you. And they're hungry. And they're, they're all hungry. Yeah. And they're all qualified. They're all ready to go. They already have their pre-approval for hard money or you know conventional. They already have experience. They've already had training. So they're ready to go. So it's the perfect opportunity for those bread and butter deals. That's what we're looking for. And mo most of your guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but most of your guys use hard money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even one of our recent deals was wonderful. You know, it was the foundation was off by seven inches. You know, there was a, a full cosmetic rehab. The roof needed to be done. It was probably about a forty thousand re dollar repair. But our team went in there, knocked it out. You got paid. I got paid. They got a great house, and then the appraisal went ten thousand dollars above what we thought it was going to be. So we even looked better. And they made equity. They made cash flow. Uh, they bought a beautiful house in Universal City. Everybody wins. I've and the seller lot. won. I've learned a lot about hard money because um, I, I kind of work with Casey a lot. I already know they're going to need an inspection and an appraisal. I already like know the, the ins and outs of what hard money guys are looking for. So I can actually, that one deal we did, we actually were only able to see it twice after we contracted yeah. it. Yeah. So it made it very difficult, but I told, I already knew what we needed. I knew for sure we needed an inspection and I knew for sure we needed an appraisal. So I knew we needed to see it at least twice. But right. if you don't know the hard money side, right. you might have got burned not knowing what you need to look at. Well, I'll continue on that. It's uh, it's pretty cool that I could tell the wholesalers, hey, if you were able to bring us these bread and butter deals, get some pictures, get some videos, have the, I'll tell you what the price that we need to be at it so that way you can work your magic and reverse engineer it and get the price that you need it at and we'll be able to just buy it and we'll close within, you know, seven, ten days. The fastest we've closed is about four days. Those are cash deals. So, Awesome. So there's a few things I want to go over here because we have a unique perspective with you, Casey. But first off, I wanted to say hello to Miss Kimberly Martinez. I appreciate you watching. Hopefully we have Thank some you, good Kimberly. items. There you go. Uh, that we can take notes on. So everybody in the room, everybody watching, if you're trying to be a wholesaler, you got to be thinking of opportunities of leverage. You want to be in contact with a gentleman such as Casey. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to kind of clarify what he does one more time. Is he works with here here in San Antonio? He works with a uh, education and mentor group for real estate investors that are looking right. for single family homes. Okay, right. so his company teaches people how to be proficient investors and obtain their own financial freedom. Mm -hmm. Within his company, he they have agents, uh, licensed mm -hmm. agents, who find uh, investment quality deals for those mm -hmm. uh, people that learn how to invest. So those are the clients. That's what Casey is. So Casey is always on the lookout, always looking for deals for these uh, investor or these investments right. for his clients, for these right. buyers. So for you as a wholesaler, if you have a deal by having one contact with Casey, mm -hmm. you actually are in contact with tens or even a hundred uh, plus different individuals that look thousand. at your deals. <laughs> there you go. Thousands, <laughs> thousands. Thousand. Like your deals, when you send it to your investors, they go pretty quick. It's, right? Yeah. It's literally a day. Yeah. So it's a good deal. Uh, really. And additionally with him too, um, the, the investors that they teach their particular way of how to assess a property, you know, a very common rule is like a percentage all in, like 70% all in. Mm -hmm. But they look at that, but they also look at it more in depth from other angles and other formulas. Mm -hmm. So uh, some deals that will work, uh, don't work over here, may work for them based on their goals uh, for their own investment portfolio. Right, right, right. right. So um, if you're an agent, let's take the perspective of you. And if, let's say, anybody in the room here. I think or she had a question, too. Oh, do we have a question? Oh, no, she was just hollering. She was oh. just saying, hey, you're looking good oh, on camera. <laughs> Keep it up. Keep it up. Um, so if, if a wholesaler was bringing you a deal, 
Let's right. take that perspective because you're looking on behalf of your thousands mm -hmm. of investors. Mm -hmm. We're right. going to 10,000 investors. 10,000 it. investors. It's a big company. Yeah. Yes. So what are the important pieces of information um, that you look at or that you want to make sure you receive from the wholesaler so that you can make a proper decision, mm. you have a complete file, and you can make a quick decision to communicate with your investors and in, in, in return the wholesaler can get a quick response from you as well. Typically, I'll get an email or a text uh, from these guys. And they'll give me the, the address and they'll give me their purchase price that they think that they could get it at. I'll take that address and I'll do a comparable market analysis and find out all the backstory about the house. I'd like to know the, the story of what's going on with the seller. And then when can we close is uh, pretty much all the pertinent information. Typically, they're going to tell me you, we need $2,000, $3,000 earnest money. That earnest money is going to go to the title company. I'll need the contract, and I'll need the assignment page. And then immediately, I'll blast it out to all of our members and uh, with the pictures and the video and my analysis of what the cash flow and the equity and all that good stuff that's needed for my investors, then we'll, we'll get a few people that want it. And then all we got to do is just set it up to where we can show it because most investors are going to want to walk the property, even though they have video, even though they have pictures, they're still going to want to put their hands on the property. And I'm pretty good with my numbers as far as rehab. So I'm not a contractor, but I've been doing this for a while. And yeah, so I can pretty much tell you, shoulder, yeah, yeah, I can pretty much. Yeah. I I, I've done a few rehabs myself. I know <laughs> how much it takes to put in a floor and some paint you know so that's that's pretty much what we need so okay take note to this really quick address let's, pictures let's do a recap of everything that you need to present to uh, an investor number one you need to have the address mm -hmm. so he can run his numbers provide all of what you think the numbers are going to be when we do a hilco um number we do a, 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 an estimation of what we think value is uh mm -hmm. also rent rates estimation right. uh and then estimation of repairs now that's just ballpark numbers for him just to get a quick idea mm -hmm. he obviously is going to run his own numbers right. which is a proper thing to do if you have photos send all the photos but not just photos of the living room you need to also include photos of problems so inside electrical panel outside electrical panel maybe if the roof looks wavy take a photo of that and you a see slow video Yes, and not then a, here we go. Not a video. race video. <laughs> so video, <laughs> video, video walkthrough really helps. <laughs> video walkthrough of the house helps. That's bonus, but it really helps uh, your investors right. get an assessment of it. A right. slow video, like he was saying. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, obviously, the price point. You need to know what the price point is. Mm -hmm. uh, the closing date. So he mentioned how quickly does this one need to close? A lot of people don't mention that. That's an important piece of information for him, especially right. when they're considering their lending components. Hard money versus cash. Exactly. So uh, the closing date. And then uh, lastly is uh, how can they get access? So is it an appointment? When's the next appointment? Or is there a lockbox uh, uh, combo or those type of things? It is so much easier when it's vacant versus if there's a tenant in there, but we can still take those down. Right. So if you can provide all that information that you are providing a full, um, you know, removing most of the question marks. Now, whoever you give it to, it's their responsibility, obviously, to do their own due diligence, especially if they're trying to acquire this investment. However, if you can set it up to where you've done a lot of the homework for them or started the uh, homework for them, then that can make it smoother for you. And then that might be a speed scenario where, hey, you found a buyer really quickly. And I have one final thing to say about uh, relationships with wholesalers. And, you know, we develop those relationships and you become, you know, trust each other uh, as time goes by. The thing that I ask is, is if you're going to be working with anybody else, because I know that this is, you know, a business for you, I know that you're going to need to be able to blast it to other people. As long as you're up front with people like me, hey, I'm working with other people just in case. You don't have to wait on me to be able to get all my, my people, but we're pretty quick. If you have another buyer that's already on it, just let me know. So that way I'm not, you know, taking a lot of time and showing the property and bringing five people over and then, oh, it's sold. You know, that would be the, the only negative thing. But most of the time, people are like, hey, I got another buyer. Or, hey, you're the only person we're working with, but I'll give you two days. Yeah, no problem. Boom. Knock it out. He loves hearing that. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you, Casey. Appreciate Thanks. it. You did it. Uh, you rocked it. Rocked Rock it. Roll. Okay. So, uh, upcoming, we have, uh, looks like, Jason. So, you're going to be next. However, before we get situated, uh, I do want to take a moment to say that uh, this is our first 
episode or show of this caliber where, um, by the way, really quick, Hernando has a lead for you, Casey, in the comments, so you might want to check that out. Um, but this is our first episode of this magnitude where we are taking the time to talk to people individually about their scenario, and we actually have a sponsor, which is really cool. Uh, we're working with Mr. Jake Rivas with Jake of All Trades. He has a podcast. We were talking about podcasts earlier in the day. He has a podcast that's called Jake of All Trades, and it's an awesome podcast uh, where he is a financial planner that focuses on uh, millennials specifically. Now, he can help anyone, but millennials is who he focuses on uh, specifically. And he actually, on his podcast, interviews uh, everyday people all the way up to business owners and uh, diff everything in between. So uh, he has a really unique perspective of how different people look at money, how they assess money, and how they plan for money into the future. And right now, he's actually doing a series of episodes around real estate. So something to really that's really cool that you can check out, Jake of All Trades. So come on up, uh, Jason. No, so guys, that's why we get paid the big bucks. Why do we get paid the big bucks? Because we're problem solvers. We coordinate everything. We direct everything. We're like movie directors, right? We have to make sure that the deal, uh, we make the deal work, all right? The deal, it's seldom that a deal comes along and it's just like, oh, poof, it's already working. It's great, right? You have to make the deal work and you might pick it up and not realize that it's in a flood zone, right? Which is why you always want to do uh, as much research on it as possible. Um, but not only that, but, you know... It, you get creative with problem solving. You can't just, oh, oh, it's in a flood zone. Nobody likes flood zones. Let me go home and find another deal. No, this is a situation where, okay, you ask your buyer, what do I have to do to get it to work, right? Well, how do I, how do I make this work for you, Mr. Buyer? Okay, so hopefully you like that meme we were with Juan there. It's a little on the lengthy side like we were talking about, but that's how he, how he does it. Uh, Manuel, appreciate you watching. Omero, thank you for tuning in. And Kenneth, uh, you're here in multiple ways, so appreciate that. Like all the comments and love. Again, the reason we are doing this is to provide value to everybody that's in the room, but also the people watching. If you can ask your questions and your comments, we'll make sure to interact with you. So we have another uh, special guest here. Who we've actually done some deal. Actually, my last property that I bought personally came from this guy. Yes. Uh, so we have Mr. Jason Flores. Good morning. Can you do a quick introduction of who you are and what you do? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Jason Flores. Uh, I'm the owner of New Life Texas Homes. You can see down below. Um, I recently started wholesaling in October of last year. Started working the code violations list. Um, actually had some real estate experience. Um, for uh, doing foreclosures, tax foreclosures for a private company that was located in San Antonio. And um, so I kind of wanted to get more, in more into detail as far as, you know, uh, the flipping side, but didn't actually didn't know about wholesaling it's, itself. And um, took the initiative, did a little of, uh, you know, uh, Investor Army look, you know, on YouTube. Uh, Connor, Connor, we'll do a quick plug. Connor Steinberg, Connor, Investor you're Army. the man. He has a great podcast, uh, but really quick plug. I did an episode with him, and I, you know, unbiased best episode is my Unbi episode. Unbiased, huh? Unbiased. It's, it's on my favorite list. Yes, yeah, on the favorite. <laughs> so uh, I jumped ahead and uh, did did the code, uh, you know, code violations. Joined a how, how long ago was this roughly? Uh, this was in October. It started. I knew it was going to take a little time just to kind of get into the into the motion. Uh, December, I started calling people. Actually, did some uh, driving for dollars, and uh, got with an investor that. Uh, actually had a couple of rentals and he just wanted one of the renters to uh, get out. I guess he just wanted to sell that property. Um, and I, it was my first one. So it was kind of scary in the beginning, but uh, ended up doing the deal with Marco. And that was your first one. That was my oh, first man, deal. Hey, man. Top. High five. That's right. Yeah. So uh, Mark, Killing it. Marco and I have been our best friends. And yeah, that's right. We do, he's gonna, he hasn't taken me out to lunch yet, but we, we're I'm working gonna, on it. We're going to get there. Um, uh, that comes on deal number three. By uh, the deal way. number three. Yes. Well, I'm on deal four right now. So. Oh, dang. Well, um, I haven't heard about him. <laughs> 
but um, I'm do- it's doing great. I- I've I've seen the- from the beginning of January. I've done one deal each month. Um, I think my only my only problem right now is just to kind of be a consistent. Where yes, I you know I want to see three or four deals each month. Where uh, I want to be consistent in calling people. Um, I I. I- I love bandit signs. I guess people do, you know, put bandit signs, but I, I, I am just not that type of person. Okay. But um, I, I want to do everything legally. Sure, <laughs> sure. But I, I still want to show my face out there. You know, be you know out there, speak to the people, uh, and call them, and you know, be that person that can help them out at the end. So, uh, in in a succinct way, what's your uh, main hurdle that we can help you with? Uh, my main hurdle is. Um, it's I guess I mean right now is just finding that umph to uh, to do more to find out hey what should be my next step uh, in wholesaling besides you know yes I have all these leads on my laptop uh, you know I dry, I think I've I've passed the code compliance because I mean there's so many people working that list right now that I think if I just drive for dollars and actually my second and third deal. Uh, you know, I've actually worked in that same one specific area. So I kind of put a goal to myself to say, Hey, I'm just going to work this area and be an expert in this area. And it's, it's worked out so far. Um, my end buyer for my second and third deal have been all the same person. And I have a fourth, uh, deal in that same area as well that I'm, I'm going to be presenting him because it's going to, you know, it's just that area that's really, really hot. And I'm thinking, well, you know, if I'm just going to work this area, it's going to be the, the best one and I'm going to start getting as much property as I can. Okay. So just to make sure I have clarity here. So what you're trying to do is get consistency at a higher volume. Yes. Okay. And what do you feel is holding you back from that? Um, I think, I think after, and then this is just, I guess the new begin new wholesaler beginners type where, you know, you, f- you, f- you make that, you know, 10, 15, you know, my last deal was a, a 20, uh, $20,000 assignment. And I was really happy about Dude, you that. You don't even need us, man. You're you've done it. Yeah, I mean, but <laughs> but no, I mean that. I mean that's just one deal, I, and I sure. understand that's a great deal. It's a you know, it, it's God, you know, pro- you're trying to for build a business was, where it's consistent. Yeah, where it's okay. just consistent. Where even so. if it's five or ten, you know, whatever it is, I just want consistency. Where I see, hey, I can I'm contracting my fourth sure. deal like like Aaron's busting it out, you know, like every month. <laughs> okay, so Juan, I want you to answer this. So. Your advice, since you've been doing this for a while, what is uh, what are some items that you would recommend to get the consistency? And by the way, people watching, if you have some feedback, if you're consistent, talk about what you would say. So l- let me make sure I understand. You want to get consistency at a higher volume, right? Yes. <clears throat> so how did you get consistency? It sounds like you've done one deal a month for the past since you started, mm-hmm. right? So how did you, let me ask you, how did you get that? Um, really it's, again, it's all been driving for dollars. I, I, I did the, the first couple of months where it was all code compliance and I just thought, you know what, everybody's working this. Let me just start working on this specific area. So I actually, uh, I have experience in property taxes, uh, doing foreclosures and property taxes. I never hit the foreclosure, you know, uh, sales, but actually people that are in delinquency, I mean, it's all public record. Um, I know how to go through the county clerk, you know, all that information. It's, it's, I've, I've learned from past couple of years. How often are you driving for dollars? Every day. Every day? Yeah, every day. I mean, I, I have, I literally have a list of probably 100, 150, you know, I, more, I mean, I'm really good at vacancies, uh, you know, which, t- which kind of telling out which was a vacancy, which was not. So now that you've mastered driving for dollars, right? Sounds like you've mastered that. Mm-hmm. Try another lead generation form. You may not like bandit signs, but maybe do bandit signs because they get a lot of they get a lot of uh, a response. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to do just to get that payday. Uh, I've mentioned it before. I'm not the biggest fan of cold calling. I'm not the biggest fan of doing that. I'd rather do bandit signs, mm-hmm. right? But I know that cold calling gets me more consistent deals, right? Yes. I know that calling those lists get gets me more consistent deals. So I, I hammer it and I hammer it and I hammer it and I hammer it. <clears throat> so you've already mastered one lead generation. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. You've already mastered one lead generation. Start mastering another one. You can do this. So you can do this. You've already mastered it. You can do that in your sleep. Don't drive and sleep. <laughs> Don't sleep and drive. <laughs> what I'm saying is you could, I mean, if you needed to, you could just do it without thinking, right? Mm-hmm. So now that you've got that down, Pick up another lead generation source, right? To the point where you're doing a different lead generation every day. 
Monday's going to be driving for dollars. Tuesday's going to be bandit signs. Uh, Wednesday's going to be networking with other wholesalers. Thursday's going to be calling up your buyers or uh, tax va- tax vacancy lists or whatever, tax pre foreclosure lists or whatever. Okay. And do that un- until you can generate leads from all lead generation sources. Where well, they have you calling, they have you they have themselves calling you. So they even just that, like, hey, or even have people, you know, like I said, even have other wholesalers reaching out to you. Hey, I need I need help moving this. Can you help me move it? Will Marco buy this? Because he'll buy everything that's good, right? <laughs> so, so not like I said, that's all you have to do is in, increase your efforts in a different arena that you haven't mastered yet. So that's that would be my advice if you're going to be more consistent about it. Okay, uh, so I'm going to give you three pieces of I- info as feedback here. Uh, real quick question: Are you at your capacity, like yourself, uh, your time and effort wise? Um, no. What what percentage are you at? Mm, probably seventy five. So why aren't you at 100%? Let me ask you that. Um, there's certain, uh, I guess there's things that are going on in my life right now that, you know, have other, you know, family itself and other Sh- things. So well. are you 100% of what is reality, like what you can put it yes. put it in? Okay. So then you need to, you, since you're already doing everything you can, and that's a, a big assumption, hopefully you are, um, then you need to start looking at leverage points, okay? There's two main ways in which you can leverage, and this is important for everybody here, okay? You two watching. Uh, We have uh, Jeremy. Appreciate you watching, Jeremy. Um, Leverage points. Number one's money. Number two is labor, like manpower, okay? Um, And and this is predicated on the fact that you've ran your numbers. So you need to go into your business now, if you're not tracking everything, you need to be tracking everything. You need to be tracking how many leads you've been bringing in, what your cost per lead is, um, but also with your, you said three contracts, four contracts? Four contracts, sir. Like, um, you know, the the effort that's gone into that, how many leads led to those contracts, lead to the contract ratio, those type of things, okay? The two leverage points are going to be uh, using money. So uh, obviously you've brought in a good amount of money. You need to have a percentage of that or a portion of that now going into marketing. Mm-hmm. So just like you picked an arena that you, you personally put your time into to master it, now you need to pick, like really I would suggest one arena that you're gonna start spending money on that you're gonna be consistent, whether that's mailers or you said you didn't wanna do bandit signs. I, I, mailers is probably the, the simplest one that's not as time uh, consuming you can go to like click to mail.com there's a lot of different websites well they'll do the mailers for you they have templates those type of things where you don't have to do it you don't have to write anything out the other one is manpower so um, c- go to the networking events or just connect on Facebook to where you can meet with people that you've done four deals now at this point you have actually completed a deal, so you know what it looks like. You know what a deal looks like, and you know how to do the documentation. So now try and work with somebody that maybe has the time that you don't have because you have these other commitments that, hey, I'll do a split with you. Maybe it's 50-50, or maybe when you're first starting out, I'll give you you know, 40% split or 25%. Whatever the agreement is, you all have a, a, an understanding and uh, a partnership of sorts. And I think what also I've, I'm actually taking uh, initiative or is that I have other, you know, family as well, friends as well. There you go. That are interested because they see the success, you know, they see what's going on. Um, I mean, yes, and I, I, I want to, I'm the, the type where I want to help out as much as possible and be that, you know, uh, give that information to them. So I, you know, they help me out. They're like, hey, you know, I'll find, I'll drive this area and they'll send me addresses. You know, so I'm like, that's even great. That's even better. Okay. So we got a question coming up. So we want to go over that. But if you're going to mm-hmm. include some people, make sure it's specific what they're going to be doing and ex- specific of what um, are kind of the roles in a sense. So, hey, if you're going to be working with me and you're going to be driving around, I want to make sure that you, you know, in a month you need to get 200 houses or whatever. But make sure it's specific and actionable so you know whether or not they're doing it. All right, what's the question? Jason, right? Yes, sir. Um, You you had spoke that maybe the bandit signs isn't going to work for you. You're at 75% to 100% capacity, but you wanted to be able to get more uh, proficient and efficient. I think Hilco, if if I'm correct, don't you partner up with people for marketing? Do. Don't you have that strategy? I think that would be a perfect fit for him. So um, what we do is uh, what we call basically campaign investing. So campaign investing is basically people that have money that ho- don't have the time. In, in your scenario, it's a little bit different because you're actually a wholesaler. But there's a lot of investors out there that 
don't have the time, the energy, or even the knowledge to be able to do deals, but they have money. So what we'll do is they'll give us uh, a marketing budget, um, a marketing budget, then we use those dollars to go ahead and do mailers, those type of things. And then any leads that come out of that, we'll do like a percentage split of it, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So that's another way to leverage. Uh, we'll do it with, with you if you want. Hey, yeah. let's talk. You let's talk. <laughs> there you go. Um, but that's something that you can definitely do. So r really, if you're at capacity, and that's something where you need to really introspectively consider where you're at, really be thinking, am I really doing enough? Because honestly, um, even though you're saying that you're at 100%, there's probably something either you could be doing more or better, more efficiently. So always be reflecting on that. I'm even doing that now, today. Like I'm rambling right now, I could probably be a little bit more efficient with what I'm saying. Uh, but b have some reflection on that so that you know what you're doing. But then after that, look at leverage points. How can you leverage your money, especially if you're making these awesome fees, use a portion of that. And how can you leverage manpower or labor so that you can, br I mean, the reason Hilco is able to do volumes because it's not just me, it's a team. So how can you start building your team, okay? So Okay, it's got to be quick. Though. Okay, just real quickly, I want to recommend a book to you. You might have read it already. It's 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. You read that, and as you're reading it, uh, or as you're listening to it on audiobook or whatever it is, you'll feel yourself start increasing your efforts. Okay. Um, I, I, sometimes you'll need to reread it. I just started rereading it, and I've, I've felt myself where my efforts are increasing. So take, take a look at that book. See if you're at capacity. If you are, take Marco's advice and use, uh, use leverage. Awesome. All right. Great book. Thank Great you. book recommendation. If you got a book recommendation, throw it in the comments. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Uh, people can find you on Facebook. Yes, sir. Okay. New, li New Life Texas Homes. New Life Texas Homes. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. How do you handle title issues that come up on your deals? I love, I loved your answer earlier. I don't. <laughs> the title company does. And that's really why I hire a title company on every deal that I do. It's important. They'll clear it all up. That's not my job. My job is uh, to find deals that and close them. <laughs> <coughs> this is a fundamental truth with the real estate business, but really any in, uh, business and for you to be successful yourself is building the right team around you. And one of those team members is a good title company. And if you can find a good title company, then they're gonna be able to help you when issues come up on your deals that are title issues. Jumped in, appreciate you watching in. And Renee, thank you for uh, watching as well. Again, this is a show, uh, video content, where we wanna get your feedback, your questions, so we can help you. We're actually got another featured guest here. We got Kenneth to my right, part of the Hilco team, but we also have Mike here. Mike, can you do a quick introduction of who you are and what you're trying to accomplish here? Sure, my name is Mike DeHaven. Go ahead and put the mic a little oh. closer if you don't mind. My name is Michael DeHaven. Uh, my wife and I started real estate probably about two years ago. Um, the last two years I've basically been doing it part time in between surgeries and whatnot. Uh, but now all that's done, I'm ready to go at it full Ready force. to rock and roll. That's Make it. it happen 2018. That's right. That's right. Um, I'm a former policeman. Uh, oh really? Well, awesome. 22 years. My wife Vicky, she's a an RN at uh, Bamsey. So I just want to give her a little props because she has my back. There you go. Okay, so the reason we're doing this is we want to uh, give you value and help you um, in whatever you're trying to accomplish, especially in the wholesaling arena. That's more of our expertise. Uh, do you have a particular question, deal, or even a hurdle that we can kind of discuss to help you out? The only question I have is, like, whenever you're writing... A you can have more than one question, by the okay. way. <laughs> when you're filling out the contract, you already got the negotiation process done. He's already uh, signed the contract. When setting the closing date, should we give our end buyer time? And if so, how much time sh should we give them to close? Even but the seller wants to, let's just say the seller wants to close in 10 days. But you don't know if your end buyer is going to be able to be there in 10 days. Do you want to answer that? 
Um, when, when, with regards to, I guess, uh, closing dates, um, I know that typically what I do is I always uh, set out for 30 days because, and basically what it is that we're gonna close on or before, you know, that date. So right. if everybody is ready, if everything's ready to go, then we can just go ahead and just close, uh, you know, immediately. Um, I, I tr I've had some experiences where somebody wanted to close in 10 days or 15 days and, and that's just, I mean, like you said, it, it's, it's hard to know that, you right. know, if somebody will be able to, to close that quickly. Okay, so when it comes to the seller, obviously more time is better on the contract so that you can make sure um, that you can perform on the contract. You know, additionally, things might change within the time frame. You might, your original game plan was a wholesale, but maybe you come into private money and maybe you want to buy it, those type of things. So by having those longer uh, closing dates, it gives you flexibility. Now, let's just uh, take your scenario where you mentioned this seller's particular. This seller needs a close in 10 days. Uh, if that's the case and you've already communicated and you're like, hey, you know, I really need to be at a month or three weeks or whatever it is, and they're still adamant about the 10-day time frame, then just make sure you find a buyer that can meet those criteria. Um, you need to have somebody that can close quickly. Either they're only paying with cash or they're working with uh, a lender that can meet that timeline. A lot of hard money lenders, if they're proficient, um, they can close pretty quickly. Like mm -hmm. Casey was saying, on one of his four days, that's probably the shortest you can do it. Right. Um, cash can happen right away. There's also scenarios where maybe the buyer has private money and private money can just as simple as a wire, so those type of things. So then uh, let's answer your other question in there. You had like an onion question. There was <laughs> layers, so we're gonna make sure to cover all of them. Okay. Let's assume that the seller and you come to the agreement, you have a 30 day close. Okay, now y y you're talking to potential buyers and you have a buyer for this contract, okay? An investor for the contract. Um, typically what we do is put just two weeks in that time frame. So the assignment contract uh, needs to close and be completed within a two week time frame. Uh, and then that way, uh, if that is the agreed upon terms, then we'll make sure to let the seller know. Because again, like Kenneth mentioned, the original contract is on or before. Right. So then we'll uh, situate it that way. But two weeks is like kind of our average, our go-to. Mm -hmm. But right, each contract is unique and different. You have to make sure that you abide by what the contract states. So if you need to adjust appropriately, then do that. But be mindful of worst case scenarios and have those that communication um, proper and from early on with all parties involved, especially right. on the seller side. Right. Okay, so what else you got for me? You're telling me you don't got no other questions. Well, of course, I got. All right, well, hit me, hit me. Let's make it rapid fire. What we got? Say you go to, uh, you buy a wholesale deal or you get a wholesale deal under contract. Is it okay, I guess ethically, to re-wholesale it to another person? What, what, <laughs> he's like absolutely <laughs> over there. I didn't understand the question. What do you mean re-wholesale it? I guess you buy uh, a home from Hillsong. I, I buy it from y'all. And then I want to turn around and wholesale it to somebody else for. Like, like a double assignment. Yeah, a double assignment. Sure, you can do a double assignment. Okay. I mean, y you just have to make sure all the documentation is properly in place, make sure it's properly communicated to all parties what's going on. Um, you know, if, if it's a question mark of doing it the right way, just make sure to do it the right way. Right. Proper communication, proper documentation, and then just make sure that you perform, you know, on right. what you agree to contractually, those type of things. Um, there's a lot of scenarios where w uh, we have done double assignments in the past. We also will uh, partner with other individuals who have the contract and just do one assignment and then we'll have like a partnership agreement uh, in those scenarios. But um, really it's, it's all about trying to create relationships and situations where you're creating win-win scenarios and that's what it's all about. I think we got a question here from our Hernando. Hey man. Yeah, he asked, how do you wholesale a sub to deal if there is no contract of sale? I'm confused about that because you still need to have a contract on a sub two deal. So I'm not sure 
how you're structuring that. But on a sub, sub two deal, you still get a contract on that. And then you would just do it like normal. You would assign that assign that contract. So if you, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question correctly, but on a sub two deal, you still need to have a contract. Any deal is going to need to have a contract. So hope that answers it for you. What else you got for me? What about over here? We got to take questions from the audience. Which, uh, okay, Juan of course needs to say something. He needs to get on the camera somehow. There we go. See, I didn't really have an answer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, to to um, to add on to that, you guys, we got to keep in mind we're not like. I get that question a lot of the times. How do you wholesale a sub two? How do you wholesale an owner finance? How do you wholesale this kind of deal? Guys, we're we're selling the contracts. Remember to keep that in mind. So you can structure a deal however you want to. We're just selling the contracts. So r that's where it gets confusing. It's like, well, you know, if it's a sub two deal and, you know, uh, who's going to like, how does the end buyer get in? Just structure the deal and sell the contract. That's what we're doing. So I think there's a lot of confusion there where you where a lot of people are thinking, hey, you know, I'm selling this house. No, you're selling the contract. Structure the deal, sell the contract. It'll make the, it'll, once you get that, uh, in your mind as a foundation, you, you, it'll just make things so much easier uh, when you're trying to structure those contracts. So I just want to say one more time, Kimberly, Joseph, Hernando, it looks like we have uh, Jeremy in here. Uh, we appreciate, and there's a few more, appreciate you staying on and, and watching, and make sure to give us your feedback. We appreciate you watching. Did you have something? You have something. No, okay. So um, Mike, Ultimately, what I would say is this, okay? If you have questions or scenarios, um, and this is just natural, okay? And this is for everybody in the room, and it still happens to us, it's just like being human. You're gonna constantly like doubt yourself. There's gonna be mm -hmm. constantly hurdles, uh, mental barriers, especially if, you, if no one around you and like your cl close circles, meaning family and friends and maybe just peers, colleagues, none of them are in this realm it's a very different realm than what everyday life is, what the typical life plan is, those type of things. So it's very common, very natural to doubt yourself, doubt if you're doing the right thing, doubt if you should even waste your time, are you, are you crazy, you know, what's going on with that? But remember your whys, remember what you're trying to accomplish, remember your goals, remember the purpose, the reason behind it all. Why are you trying to do this? What does it unlock for you? You know, the reason that I wanted to wholesale is I wanted to be able to buy investment deals. And so I saw it as a vehicle, a stepping stone to do that. And the reason I wanted to get investment deals is I wanted to be on those cruises with Casey and his clients, <laughs> those type of things. So there's a reason for it. If, you, um, if you're doubting yourself, try and surround yourself and, and be in communication with people that are in that realm. So for instance, you know, we've seen each other a lot, you know, whenever you're feeling these moments, reach out to us, you know, reach out to me, I'd be glad to help. You know, uh, try and uh, put your, become the person that you want to be, so put yourself in those realms and reach out to the people um, that are going to support you and help you and that can give you advice whenever you need it, whenever those moments of like you're doubting yourself, you have that question, who's the person that may have the answer and that can help in that realm? And then there's people here watching, if you all go in afterwards, connect with people on social media. Maybe they don't need to be a physical representation of that support, but you can have people in, you know, Hernando, and you know, we have Joseph, we have some people in Miami that are watching, all kinds mm -hmm. of people. So try and connect in that manner. So build your support uh, net in that realm. And then just take the action, okay? A lot of people, this is my weakness, is I'll try and acquire information. I wanna make sure I do it 100% right. In life, you're never going to do 100% right on your first try or first few tries. So just take the action, make the efforts, and then um, the results will follow that naturally. So that's what I would generally say to you. But any final thoughts, items? No. I mean, you hit the okay, so if something comes up later, reach out. I got you. Okay. Right. Um, and, and then one last thing. Where can people uh, reach out to you? Um. Like if you, if somebody had a deal and they just needed some person that was just gonna work with them and try and make it happen, or vice versa, where can they get a hold of you? Give me Fa a call or text two one zero four three zero nine eight two eight. Boom. Uh, Mick and Vic Investments. Mick and Vic, I like that. Mick and Vic, Mick and Vic. All right, awesome. Thank you. Right. Appreciate Thank you. it. Excellent, excellent. He gets a round of applause too. Come on.
But a lot of buyers like buyer exclusivity, meaning that rather, I, okay, so you'll see the average wholesaler. Okay? Let's say you have you know, a bunch of wholesalers on your group. You know? Let's say that person's sending, you, you get the notification every time they post into a Facebook group or something like that. They put all the details of the property into that, 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 that post. And suddenly it's not very exclusive because you're marketing it to literally everybody and not everybody is a investor in those groups. You have the address, you have the numbers, and this is more or less just, this is what's for sale, first come, first serve. And I think that what I love most about what you guys do, and this is one of the best verbiages that you could use when you are marketing your property is, how you guys doing? I have a deal in 78207. Is anybody interested? It is hot. Contact me. You put You're some fire emojis in there, maybe some <laughs> exclamation yes. marks. All right, welcome back. We are in our final round, the, uh, the blitz round with Mr. Raymond here. Uh, appreciate you jumping in here, Mr. Matt Smith. We are going to go over um, the final thoughts, final questions, those type of things. So let's make sure to get those as well. Raymond, can you please introduce yourself and uh, let's talk about what you're trying to accomplish. Yes, my name is Raymond Amador. I'm with Florida Lee Property Management. Um, my wife and myself have been at this for about two years. We are out of New Braunfels, but most of our dealings are here in San Antonio. Um, and I'm looking for some help in uh, actually uh, volume, looking for volume here. Volume, all right, gotcha, I feel you, that's awesome. Jesse, thank you for jumping in. So what's your biggest hurdle is, or biggest problem? My biggest hurdle so far has been deals. Uh, my, my first two years, well, my first year and a half, I'm you know, new at this, so a lot of what I do is driving for dollars, and that's where I spend my time is driving for dollars. Uh, but I also send out mailers and postcards and what have you. And some of the deals that I've gotten have come through basically just driving for dollars. Uh, and I've got tons of leads just not getting that volume back, people responding to them. I've spoken to people. I've talked to them on the phone. It's just not happening th the way I see everybody else doing. Okay. <coughs> well, <coughs> keep in mind that way you see other people may not be reality. Uh, <coughs> so... Uh, <laughs> You're, you said that you, your main focus has been driving for dollars. You've generated a lot of leads. When you get a lead, that's just an address from your driving for dollars? That's, that's an address, okay. but I've made contact with homeowners. Okay. I do all the research myself, where to find them, how to locate them, um, even going through the white pages on the Internet. I mean, I've, I've found people, and I've made contact with them. So you, with all your driving for dollars, you cultivate a long list. Yes. From that long list, then you take the time one by one to skip trace, do whatever research, knock on doors, yes. carrier pigeons, whatever you can figure out to get in contact with right. them. Right. Okay. And are you happy with the number of leads that you have in that spot? No, I mean, I could, I could, I could use more leads, uh, uh, definitely, definitely, because okay. I'd like to be sending out, you know, four or five thousand, you know, cards a month if, if I could. Okay. So then when you're reaching out to these leads, uh, like percentage wise, how many of those turn into contracts? Not, not a lot, not a lot. I've had several, but not, not what I was expecting uh, at this point. Okay. All right, so there's a few things here, and I, maybe I'll need to ask a few more questions. So number one, are you only driving for dollars, or is that that's the primary item that you're doing? No, I mean, uh, <clears throat> that's the majority of what I do, but I do probate, I do foreclosures, um, and tax liens. Okay, so it sounds very similar to Jason over here, in the sense that you, you're, it sounds like your focus is driving for dollars, you're incorporating these other uh, arenas. What I would do is, yes, open up the different, w an additional arena, but I would just, rather than doing those numbers that you just mentioned, is just focus on one or maybe two at the most and be proficient at it. Gotcha. Like right now, it sounds like you're pretty proficient at the driving for dollars. Yes, you're pretty, absolutely. you're on top of it, that kind of thing. Now, when, s when you're working a deal from driving for dollars, you got in contact with the owner, you try and have a conversation to come to an agreement on numbers that you can contract. Um, what happens if you don't come to an agreement? Well, we, if we don't come to an agreement, basically I, I don't back off. I give them time to rethink it, and I make contact with them. Whether it's a week or two or three weeks later, I still stay in contact with those folks. Okay. And how do you it's still an open lead. You know, these right. people, are they want to sell. 
I just may not be the right person for them. Sure. But, you know. And h how do you keep track of your leads? I have everything sp on a spreadsheet okay. that, I, that I log everything, everywhere that I've gone, every house, every person, numbers, addresses. I have a, a spreadsheet that I use. Okay, well then that's great. So all the leads are organized. I really like that every lead is an open lead. And this is something that's really important for everybody here. Too many people will uh, mark a lead dead very quickly. Actually, very, very few of the leads that we procure are ever marked dead, okay? They're, all, they're always pretty much open. They're really only dead if the property has sold. Everything else is in a follow-up stage, whether it's follow-up in one week, two weeks, a month, six months, those type of things. But, and when I, now we use a CRM, and I don't know how many, your volume, uh, that's a, a decision to make once you have like a significant volume. <clears throat> but when I operated out of a spreadsheet, what I would do is I made a column for follow-up, and every lead had a follow-up date. If, if, if your leads, not everyone has a follow-up date, you're missing out. You're shooting yourself in the foot, because all the work that you goes into generating the lead, it's a lot of time, energy, those type of things. You need to make sure you're working them properly. So I would put a follow-up date on every single lead, and then I made it s to where I did like a conditional formatting to where if it was that day, it would turn a certain color. So every day I come into my spreadsheet, and then I knew I made the phone calls, those type of things. Um, what you may want to do is just call through all your leads. Just do it. So every we do this every once in a while. Even though we might, you get in your groove and you have the, all these follow-ups, those type of things. If you feel like you're getting stagnant, one day we'll just say, okay, let's just call through everything. Let's get a fresh update. You never know. Even though you might have a follow-up a month from now, just everybody gets an update, and then you start fresh. Got gotcha. you. Got uh, that's one approach. The other thing is a lot of the things we were saying with Jason. If you're trying to <coughs> increase volume, is um, is is basically uh, working, look at leverage points, working other lists. C can you do more with uh, the money that you have? Can you leverage it in a different a different way? Can you uh, do, when, when you real quick, when you do the mailers to your driving for dollars list, what does that look like? Is it like a postcard it's or a letter? It's a postcard, right. It's a post postcard that, uh, you know, colorful postcard that basic information, you know, mm -hmm. their house, my information, how to contact me. Um, you know, quick cash for your and house. And uh, you just send that once and then you wait for the response? You, I'll send it out, I'll send out a, a postcard and sometimes I follow up with an actual letter. Okay. A letter that I write out to the to the owner and hopefully get a response. How many it. times do you mail them, th or um, that lead? So far in the last year or so, two years, I've probably mailed out several thousand. No, I mean no, I mean like, when you generate a lead, one lead, let's say it's one house, how often do you mail them? You send them one postcard, no, one letter? No, I'm usually sending it? about three to four. Okay, so that's another thing I would suggest. Whenever you're doing mailers, do a minimum of six touches. Six. Actually, eight is really where you want to be, but six is kind of more affordable. Um, what we we kind of moved away from letters. We only do letters um, kind of uh, every so often we'll handwrite the letters. But aside from that, we really just do postcards because it's more cost efficient. So we'll just hit our lists every so often. And honestly, what you're doing with the driving for dollars is actually huge because that's a custom list. E everyone can buy, go buy a tax delinquent and all this online, but that list that you created, nobody can buy that. That's right. gold. So that's you're putting a lot of sweat equity to get that, so that's awesome. But it looks like we have a, a question over here, a comment. What do we got? A comment. So Mr. I Joe. Yes, sir. All right. What yeah, you so got? So I, ha I hear a lot of people going driving for dollars and uh, bandit signs and postcards. I'm a letter carrier, and I, drive, I walk around these neighborhoods, and I see a lot of empty houses. And I know the owners that own those empty houses. I deliver those postcards. And some of them, most of them go into the trash or recycle bin or something like that. I, I tell them, hey, are you selling your house? They're like, yes. And I said, well, I'm an investor. I want to buy. And they're like, okay. And I think a lot of people are missing face-to-face, uh, -face, personal time, to build that rapport. So instead of, I, I always thought, instead of driving for dollars sometimes, you might have to get out of your car and walk the blocks to every house and talk to, and talk to people. Because I have two, two buyers, three buyers, up to three buyers, that they're willing to sell me their house. And, and I just, that's why I'm here, to learn how to get their house. But a lot of, I think a lot of times we're missing the face-to-face uh, -face contact with people to build that rapport, because it's hard to build rapport if you, you don't make contact with those people. That's true. So 
uh, as a letter carrier, what, what I do is, is called parking loop. So I park at one end of the street, walk down two or three blocks, and then come around to my back to my vehicle. No wonder you're so fit. Over right. There. <laughs> like, uh, so um, I think a lot of I think a lot of people are uh, missing that face to face time. But well, just a side note there, uh, I'm in, an investor, whole investor. I have cash too, so if you're looking for to, to partner with anybody, I'm here. Yeah, but what my suggestion was like, yeah, I want to partner with all of y'all. But at the same time, everyone's like, hey, how do I build up leads? How do I build up leads? And these cards, some of them work. Band signs, some of them work. It's driving dollars, some of them work if you make contact with them. But I think a lot is is, is face to face because they trust me. They they're like, hey, I, I I know you. I build rapport, and and. I mean, that, I think that's an element that people can uh, invest in. Also, if you're looking for an, uh, a house in a in certain area, I would suggest talking to your letter carrier. To, uh, how, make, how do they get in contact with a letter carrier? If, if, if you find, uh, drive around that block, drive around that little, uh, like maybe five to ten street block that they do, and ask if they're the regular on that, on that route. And if they are, then they know the empty homes. They, if they're a regular on that route, they they know the customer. So how do they find that person? Because like <laughs> you all have a set route. The okay, odds of them seeing you out in the field is not very high. They have to either park or they're driving to mailbox to mailbox. So you, all you gotta do is drive around that neighborhood to see where they're at, where they're located. Okay, and then once you find them, ask for a couple of minutes of their time, talk to them. Here's a suggestion. Also, they have thirty minutes of, for lunch. Thirty minutes. Suggest you take them for lunch for those thirty minutes. And around that, that neighborhood where they eat, and then tell them what you what you what you want. You're an investor. You're looking for homes because they know the empty homes. They know the owners. Right. Trust me. I've talked to my coworkers. Hey, I need an empty home. They're like, Oh yeah, I know so and so, Miss Sanchez on on Venice. She's selling her home. And so if you can talk to your carrier and be like, Hey, I'm look, I'm an investor. I'm looking for home. Don't do the well. You can do the um um what do you call it? Like um I'll pay you 500 bucks if you give me an empty house. Mm-hmm. We've gotten that a lot, and we've never gotten paid. Mm. You know what I mean? So, so take them. Tell them you're really serious. So show up. Take them to lunch. Show maybe show up with some water, an umbrella food, to buy shade them, them. Buy them lunch the and, just, and just say, hey, this is my card. Give me a contact. I would like to, to take you to lunch, get some, you know, spend some time with you, and, and, and you know, build rapport with that person and make him or her trust you. Because we've gotten a lot of investors saying, hey, we, you know, hey, we, we'll, we'll pay your referral fee. There you go. We'll referral for you $500. And we refer, I referred a couple of houses, and I never got paid. I know they got sold. So, but, you know, you got to build that rapport with that letter carrier. I, that's my suggestion for building more leads. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah. So I'll make a, a, a comment here. So thank you, Joe. That was awesome. Uh, so uh, we'll have to make sure to get people in contact with you, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my, my initial thought process was like, you're, you're awesome at finding the vacant houses and showing up to person. And based on our conversation, you seem to be pretty awesome at like skip tracing and those type of things. You also totally like hook up because um, uh, you're right. The in-person is valuable and totally works, but also the phone is also works. Right. So incorporating both of them would be really advantageous. And, and for you, it sounds like maybe there's like two components that I would recommend to you on top of what we told Jason earlier. Um, is incorporating another lead source. Apparently you've done very well with the driving for dollars and skip tracing to generate leads. You probably need to open up a new lead source of some sort that's a little bit different, whether it's um, you know knocking on doors like he was talking about, it's kind of incorporated the same, or um, working with other wholesalers or something. Pick one arena and then focus on that. And then the other one might be negotiation. So you sound like you can generate the leads, but converting leads to contracts there might be a disconnect on how you're presenting uh, what you you know the benefits you can provide to a seller. You know maybe knowing the numbers or you know there there might be something there, and that's something we Missing can talk about a little right. bit more okay. um, as well. So that's what I I would recommend in that in that arena. Um, any comments or anything? No. All right, you're just here to make the camera look good, huh? Honestly, it just depends on. So uh, Casey over here asked, what are the attrition rates of the different types of marketing? Honestly, it just depends on the individual, the time of year, the type of marketing, those type of things. Um, For us, the way we've kind of approached it is we focus in particular ones that we can kind of uh, master from 
a like a work perspective, but also from a systems perspective. That's why, and frequently in my recommendations, I'm not saying go after this lead source or try all these different things. I say like pick one that you can be proficient at. Like Jason doesn't like bandit signs, so don't pick j bandit signs. Pick one and then stick with it. Over time, when you start working with several different lead sources, then you can start measuring in that component. And even I, like at Hilco, I don't even think we're at that point yet, to be quite honest. Uh, we do measure mainly our direct mail because that's our highest expense item. So that one, we definitely want to watch the, the numbers. Uh, our numbers are generally about $250 per lead and then about $2,500 per contract, roughly. Um, but it, again, there's a lot of factors that go into that. The list, the time of year, you know, whether or not they actually were working, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, but good question, good question. Uh, Hernando, appreciate you being in here. Uh, we got Houston Watcher, Kimberly, appreciate you. Uh, sounds like you've gotten your feet wet. You did some cold calling, Craigslist, offer up, Facebook. Man, you're like, you're like on top of it. You want to build a solid buyer investor list. How can you do that? Just to answer that question is, again, leverage. That's been a common theme here. You d if When you're first starting out, it's difficult. You got to find the properties. You got to find the sellers. You got to negotiate the sellers. You got to get the contract. Then you need to find... Uh, the investor for that contract that can buy the contract. You need to make sure it's the right investor that can close, that can has, has the cash or the lending or is going to buy in that area. Then you got to see it all the way to closing and make sure you know how to orchestrate title. I mean, here's our title master over here with affidavit of airships and such. Uh, but there's a whole lot that goes into it. So um, what I a great way to start is just focus on half of the equation. So in your case, Kimberly, you've, you've done a great job of being proficient and working to generate leads and generate sellers so you can get contracts. Well, then at that point, work with other wholesalers, work with a person like Casey at the beginning of the video who has contact to several different investors and have them bring the investor client so they kind of handle the second half of the equation while you can focus on the first half of the equation, get proficient, get consistent, and then over time, maybe you take over the whole process. So that's what I would suggest. But we're kind of wrapping up here. Any last questions we can fit in real quick? Uh, last bits of topics that you want to cover? No, I mean, th that was the important thing for me is volume is, is, is generating not leads because I've got leads. It's just more, take that back, more leads so that I can generate more contracts. So this is my, like action steps right now. The first thing I would do is make sure to cultivate all your lists okay. and put all your leads together. Because I know when I did it, I had like a whole bunch of different Excels and stuff. I don't know how you do it, but I wasn't the best. That's why we moved to a CRM. But cultivate your whole list. Call through every single one. Just get an update. Hey, you know, I know we talked last week. We said we were talking a month from then. But I just wanted to touch base with you. Something told me I needed to reach out. Or I just wanted, you know, things are changing. Summer, you know, things change in life. You know, those type of things. Just want to touch base. See where you were. Make sure I you know, went over everything for you. If there was something I could do differently, I just wanted to make sure I, you know, we touched over it. Get an update on all of them. Okay. Then the second thing I would suggest is, g you know, you can reach out to us at Hillco, but anyone, like an experienced person, an experienced wholesaler, or even an investor, and say, look, I have all of these leads. Out of these leads, 20% of them, I actually had like numbers and we felt like we were close, but it wasn't too close. Maybe we were 10 grand off, 15 grand off, 20 grand off, depending on where your numbers are. You know, can you look at this? You know, what what do you think? You know, what are the numbers? Can you double check? Get a second set of eyes on it, okay. and see if they're they will give you different ideas. Uh, where you thought, hey, we were 15 grand off. Well, maybe we would look at it and we're like, no, actually, you know, if you can just get them to come down five grand, that could work or whatever. You never know. So those are two like actionable items okay. to leverage what you already have in place, and then you can incorporate everything else we talked about. Awesome. That help? Yep. Cool. Absolutely. All right, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we appreciate everyone being involved. We're going to do a little bit of bonus action for the people in the room. But everybody watching, we appreciate you watching uh, and, and sticking through all the way to the end. Again, go back to the beginning. If you came halfway through, we talked to four rock star individuals that have different situations. I hope you get something out of it. And lastly, if you're catching this on replay, go ahead and send comments 
and questions in the comment section, and we I will go in afterwards say. to answer them. But before we go, we got I'm a gonna, last item here. I'm going to cut it. Just by the way, so um, for those of you watching, this is a new show, Wholesale Academy. I turned your mic off. Sorry. That's what I get for being the producer. I get to do what I want. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you guys are watching, this is a new show, Wholesale Academy, and we also have Ask Wholesale Live, where you can really ask questions and we'll answer you in the audience. But also this, um, this, and we're doing future events for specifically for people who become uh, members and purchasers of our negotiation course. So I'll play the little trailer and show you how to buy, but you can go to hillcohomes.consulting. We have a great discount on it, so check it out. Thank you for watching.